walking in the key of provision. And I am demonstrating my faith in Christ. I am sowing this seed. And I am declaring that I am blessed of God. And I am not living in lack. I am living in abundance. My kids are not going to be begging bread. Because I have the provision of God ordained over my life, over my family, over my church, and I receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, everybody knows what today is. What's today? Father's Day. So happy Father's Day. So many of us, probably most of us, if we had a father even around us, or even someone who thought they were our father, you know how that goes, they had verbal opinions, right? <laughs> About everything concerning our life. Everything, okay? I know I did. And so I want you to take a look at what most of you think that your dad, you would have liked your dad to say, and, yeah, instead of what he really said. So go ahead. This is things that dad never really says. Life is always fair. I really enjoy repeating myself over and over again. <laughs> I just love when the kids talk back to me. I don't care if you get a job this summer. I don't care if you get detention. Uh, uh, I, I can't open this jar. See if mom can open it. <laughs> just take your time in there, okay? No means maybe. Hey, why don't you bring that ball inside and play with it? Hey, don't put that back where you found it. Just leave it on the floor. Ew, bacon. If you put a dent in the car, it's really no big deal. It's 10 a.m. Go back to bed. Look, whatever your friends are doing, just do the exact same thing. I got more than enough sleep last night. If your friends are okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Stop yeah. signs are just a suggestion. You don't need a chaperone. You don't need a seat belt. You don't need a savings account. You should buy the jeans with the holes in them. Hey, we're all going to go to church, but you can just sleep in, okay? Can we please just hang out in here for another 10 minutes? Hey, can we get some more bickering back there? <laughs> All right, bills! Yay, traffic! Woohoo, taxes! Yes! Laundry! Hey, can you kids come in here and jump on my bed? <laughs> Quick, go tell mom what happened right away. You don't need to finish your dinner. Hey, look at your phone when I'm talking to you. I wish I had a smaller TV. We got you that phone for a reason. Texting boys. <laughs> All right, everyone, listen up. Mom and I are going out of town this weekend, so please mess up the whole house while we're gone. Please throw a few parties while we're gone. Please forget about the dog entirely while we're gone. <laughs> hey, when you're finished pouring that, can you just leave it out on the counter all day? Thanks. <laughs> okay, how many of you had dads talk doing? like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Okay. So I thought that since it was Father's Day, I would honor fathers. Okay. Let's see. How many, who has the most kids? <laughs> how many do you have? You have four. Okay. You have four. I <laughs> <laughs> How many, Dovey? Six or seven. I, I think six or seven. Okay, we're not going to ask why we don't know how many we have. Okay, that's, that's pre-redemption right there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, Dovey, you like hats? Okay, here's your hat. This fits you, too. Is he or is he not a man of God? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now this is going to take a brave man. I want to know who's going to wear this and mean it. Okay. We're going to have a bunch of them, I'm sure. It's a large, so just so you know. 
It says you are wise, honest, kind, and giving. That might have eliminated it someone. <laughs> Servant of the Lord, courageous, supportive to church, devoted to God, hardworking, devout, strong, loving, generous, family-oriented, full of faith, blessed, skillful, helpful, trustworthy, and loving, God-loving. Okay, that's awesome. Now, who's going to take this shirt, wear it proudly, and live up to it? <laughs> okay, Herbert, come on. <laughs> Woo! I believe it. Hallelujah. He's going to do it right now. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Okay, now, I know that this will be exciting. I have cold stone cards. I know. <laughs> Jesse, thank you for that drum. <laughs> But I don't think you're a dad yet. Okay. Who's the fathers who, oh, Brian Emery has to have this. He eats ice cream all the time. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Brian. <laughs> okay, who else is a ice cream fanatic? Who loves Cold Stone? Woo. Oh. Okay, Farrell, come on. You raised your hand. Oh, you're not a father yet. I'm being prophetic. But anyway, <laughs> we love babies. Okay, Santo. <laughs> your, your daughter said you love ice cream. I don't know. All right, that's good. Okay, so now, ladies, let's give all of the fathers, all the fathers stand. I wasn't going to leave any of you out. Okay. All right, so I got you a little present. Blessed is the father who works tirelessly for the Lord. And it's a tire thingy. I'm sure there's a name for this. What is this called? A tire gauge. Okay, it's a tire gauge, not a tire thingy. Okay, so this is your gift from us at Liberty to bless you and help you and, and thank you for working for the Lord. I, I, I tested it to see if it worked. It worked okay on my car. Of course, I don't know what I'm doing, but okay. All right, while you're, while you're standing, I just want to command a blessing on you, so remain standing for a minute. So, yeah, stay standing. So, Father, we just thank you, God, that you have designed men and fathers to be blessed by you and so father right now god i just thank you that i release the blessing that you have already pre-designed for each one of them individually lord we declare that provision is theirs but also i declare god that vision is theirs that they see themselves differently than they've ever seen before, that they begin to, to respond differently to you than they ever have before, that you are causing them to go up into a higher level this year so that they are experiencing your limitlessness. God, I thank you that you have poured out poured out your love upon them and showed them how to become better fathers. And so, God, I exhort them today and I admonish them by the Spirit of God to rise up into different positional authority and take authority not only for their own households, Lord, but for those that you have called them to father. And so, Lord, I thank you that spiritual fathers are arising and these are them. And so, God, I thank you for the blessing that goes with 
with it. And I thank you for loving them and loving them and loving them and letting them know that they are valued by you and they are valued by us. And we give you praise for them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I love, you know, I've always um, had a heart for to see any man that is, is trying to provide for his family. It doesn't matter how they're trying to provide. It's always touched my heart when I see people out doing what they need to do in order to, to make provision for their family. And so it has always meant a lot. I, I know it means a lot to God, but it, it means a lot to, to me to see men who care. And so thank you guys for being a good representation of God and working hard so that your families can move forward. Amen? Amen. Okay, so um, my father, I have to talk about him a little bit today because he's my dad. And so my dad was really fun. And so he told stories, lots of stories. He said funny things all the time. He engaged people everywhere he was. He could get anybody to talk to him about anything. It was amazing. Everybody loved to be around him. He taught us all how to drive. I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess you'd have to be around us. I do know that, you know, I'm really glad I have a fireman sticker on my car. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, the, all the grandchildren learned a part of his poems so that they could say it back to him when we'd get together. And um, so one would start it, the other one would say it, the other one would say it until it was, I can't say it. So, I, no, I tried. I will mess it so bad up. But he sang us songs. This is all part of my memories. Fun songs, old songs, sad songs, glad songs. And he danced around the room. Oh, yes, he did. And so sometimes he danced around the room with pots and pans banging all through my house. We don't know why, okay? One day, though, he had a purpose for his dancing around the room, and he was going to teach Tirsa her address. So she couldn't remember her address. She was just a little girl. and So he ran around the room singing, 18 Hartnett, Ferguson, Missouri. See, I still remember. And so... <laughs> So she ran around the house with him. It was a great game, and she never forgot her address from that day forward. And so he made life memorable. And he left us with a lot of memories that we're going to cherish. But the, my favorite thing about my dad was that he led me to know my Heavenly Father. When I was two years old, he got saved. Him and my mom both went down to the altar on the same day. And that day he, he gave up everything that he knew from his past. And he became a transformed man that represented God in our life. And so I want to honor him. But today I want to take you into my favorite things about Abba, Father. So... How many of you heard people t refer to Abba? Some people don't even know what that means. But Abba is an Aramaic word that is translated daddy. It is a common term that children would use to address their fathers. And it signifies the close intimate relationship that a father has with his child as well as the childlike trust that a young person can put into their daddy you know it to me it just it sounds more intimate when you call him dad you know I called my dad daddy O. I don't think God cares if I call him daddy O or not and so he is daddy God and one of the things I want you to know about God is that he too is funny he's funny I think we have the wrong connotation a lot of times of who God is but he is fun to hang out with. I like to hang out with God. He cracks me up. And so people go, well, aren't you, you know, are you kind of boring because you are alone a lot and you spend time with God? No, I enjoy myself. I read the Bible and I laugh at stuff that God does. I see it through the eyes of humor. I mean, God is a little bit like 
out of the box, don't you think? Okay, so a couple, couple stories I'll remind you of is that Moses, okay, so he's going to call this guy in the middle of the desert, and he's going to make him a deliverer of the people. So does he just show up and say, hey, Moses, I have a plan for your life? I mean, he could have. He's God, right? But no, instead, he catches a, a, a bush on fire, and it doesn't get consumed. And then my favorite part is this, is that he, he, ta- he says, take your rod and throw it on the ground, and it becomes a snake. And then he says, pick that snake up by the tail. And Moses does, which proves that he can be a deliverer. (laughs) Because if he's going to pick up a snake by the tail, no one picks up the snake by the tail. They don't want to get bit. And so God just did it just, I don't know why, just to show us he has something different in his personality he wants us to know about. What about Noah? He says, okay, Noah, you're a righteous man. I'm going to save you and your family, so build a boat. And he goes, what's a boat? And why do I need one? Because it's going to rain. Okay, but they never saw rain before. That's unusual, right? That is unusual. But my favorite one, I guess this is my favorite one of all times, is that Elijah, Elijah is going to prove who the real God is. And so you can find this in 1 Kings 18. So Elijah challenges the prophet of Baal to make an altar And no fire is under it. And they're going to call on their God. And whoever's God shows up by fire, that's going to prove that they're God, right? And so he, they're done. And they are out there screaming. And Elijah's mocking them. And in the Living Bible, it says this. You'll have to shout louder than that to catch the attention of your God. Perhaps he's talking to someone or he's out sitting on the toilet. Or maybe he's away on a trip, or he's asleep and he needs to be awakened. I mean, that's funny stuff. But you guys are not getting this. Okay. We're trying. Okay. Okay. It's not very deep. <laughs> it's not the deepest coming, I promise. And so he says, okay, bring, bring water. There is a drought. Bring water. Put it all over the altar and then set it on fire. It, we're going to call down fire from heaven and see who shows up. And God does. And when he comes, he says, fire flashed from heaven, burned up the bull, the wood, the stones, the dust, and even evaporated all the water in the ditch. And the winner was... Jehovah is God, Jehovah is God, Jehovah is God. And so God could have just done that without it, but without planning all of that extra stuff. But he didn't because he was getting their attention that he does things in a different way. He's showing the sides of his creativity. And so he is personally involved in people's lives, and he wants to leave an impression. You would remember that. You would remember if you had to grab a hold of the tail of a snake you would remember if fire came down from heaven amen and so how many of you know that he cares personally about you and that he'll do anything to prove himself to you and so I was reading this book and um, it has short stories of unsolved miracles and so I mean I have made mistakes any of you made mistakes and you make mistakes and you, you live to regret them. But this was like one of the worst mistakes I've ever read about. And yet, it's also the way that God cares for us. So, it happened around noon on Mother's Day. According to the National News Repost, 27-year-old Michael Murray decided to take his two children to a medical center in Massachusetts where their mother worked. And they wanted to drop off their, her present. And so they had got her a necklace that said number one mom and, and a single red rose. And so when he was putting the kids back in the car, he had two little kids. He had a three-month-old and he had a, a year old. And so he, he, put a, he put the three-month-old on the top of the car. Yeah, in his car seat. He put the 20-month-old in the back seat and locked her in and he drove away and so as he was pulling onto the highway he started accelerating and he was going 50 miles an hour when he heard a scraping noise off of the top of his car 
and he looked in the rearview mirror, and he saw Matthew sliding down the highway in his infant seat. Yeah. And so there he was in the middle of the interstate in the path of oncoming traffic. All oh, the mothers are totally freaking right now. So there was an antique dealer by the name of James Boothby that saw the whole thing, and he said, I saw something in the air. At first, I thought someone had thrown garbage out the window, and then I saw it, and I thought it was a doll. And then the doll opened its mouth and started to cry, and I knew it was a baby. And it just landed on the road. It landed on the road. It bounced a couple of times, but it never tipped over. It landed on the road and slid, so I slammed on my brakes, and I turned my car around in the land so that no other cars could go by. And I jumped from the car, I ran, and I found an uninjured baby in an undamaged car seat and scooped him up in my arms and took him back and gave him to his petrified father. <laughs> oh. So, did God intervene? Do you think Daddy God made him have a really good Father's Day that year? <laughs> okay. So, that is the way that God loves us. He will go to all different lengths to prove his love. There is no one. That could say. Yesterday in the news, they, there was a man who said that um, there was some escapee out of prison, actually two guys, and they had already ha held people hostage, and they had threatened their life, and this man was a Christian, and he was at home with his kids, and they were making big announcements over the news, and they're saying, you know, be careful, and uh, they are these two escapees, and they're armed, and they're dangerous, and so he saw them. And they came to his house, and they were walking up the, the um, driveway, and they had their guns, and he said, I was like, I already had my gun out, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to protect my kid. And so he started to get in the, he took his kid, threw it in the car, and he was going to just try to get away from them. And he threw it in the car, and all of a sudden, they just hit the pavement in his driveway, and his words on national news was, if that doesn't make you believe in Jesus Christ, I don't know what will. Because he knew it was an intervention of God, and they came and got him and took, him, took them away, and they surrendered. Why? Because somebody was praying. Because God is proving himself to his people in unprecedented ways so that we can know him in a better way. So we know that he is not boring. We know that he is fun. We know he is our protector. And so, but we need to know God's character. The thing that sets us apart from the world is this. We are sold on that he is good. We have to be so convinced that he is good. That our life is a reflection of that knowledge. And so the disciples were asking Jesus how they should pray. I mean, he was the great intercessor. And so it says that he didn't do anything without asking the Father. And so he said, all right, I'm going to teach you how to pray. And so this is the first thing that he said was vitally important. He said to them in Luke eleven two, 2, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven. Amen. The first thing that we have to understand is that he is our Father. Say, he's our Father. He's our father. Okay, we don't have to beg him to be our Father. We don't have to ask him if he will be close to us, if we can have a different kind of relationship with him because he said we are his children. He accepted us as his kids. And we don't have to wonder if he's going to answer our prayers because we don't need to be afraid to ask him for anything. He loves us. He's our dad. He's Abba. So it takes us to a whole different thing. And 1 John 5.14, it says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything 
anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, now there we go. If you really know him for who he is, not only will you say your prayers, but you will know he hears you. A lot of people say prayers and never know the God of the answered prayer. They just say prayers because they were taught to say prayers. But if you know him as Abba, if you know him as Daddy God, then you know that he is listening to what you have to say. The minute that you say, our Father, he is listening from heaven to what you're going to say next. He wants to answer your prayers. And whatever we ask, we have the petitions that we ask of him. So we can pray in confidence. We can pray knowing that whatever I have need of, he is answering. Now, we, all of you know this prayer. So I know that we, we automatically go to the things we've already heard about it. We already go to, well, I know this prayer. I know my God. I know him personally. Really? But do you ask him as your father, and do you believe without any doubt that he is answering you when you ask a petition of him? Are you secure in the fact that he is your daddy and he loves you enough to give you what he did? In the natural, I know that my dad would have given me anything I needed for sure. And he gave me a lot of things that I wanted. But he had limitations. But my Heavenly Father is not limited. And he will give us what it is that we ask for and what we have need of. Amen? Amen. Amen. The next thing that I think is hard for people, especially in the Western world, to keep at our forefront of our hearts and our minds is this. Hallowed be your name. I think that we have tried so hard to break down the barrier of thinking that God is mad or mean or judgmental that now we have swung the pendulum to the other side that we forget he is hallowed. That means he is holy. That means our God, our Father, is pure. He's pure. And so why do you think Jesus said, these, these are the things I want you to start with. You're my dad. You're my dad. I know you. I can trust you. I can be intimate with you. I can, I can know you on a purely different level, but also I can know you as pure. I can know you as holy, and I'm going to keep that honor for you. I have seen over, over the years what television has done to family units. And all of the kids talk back to their parents and they don't honor them for being their, their parents. They break it down. And so it's a fight with parents today to keep their kids to have any kind of respect because it's cool to be disrespectful. It's funny to be disrespectful, except for it's not cool. And it's not funny. And it's destroying not only society... But it's destroying our ability to see Father in a, in a way, our Heavenly Father, in the way that he deserves to be seen and known. And that is that he is holy. He is a holy God. He is a pure God. And we have to know that in his presence, there is going to be holiness. When we go to be with him, his purity is supposed to get on us so that our heart desires to be like him and to be pure also, to live our lives holy, to live our lives differently. There is a level of respect and honor and value that we need to give our heavenly father. He is not just our friend. He is our friend. But he is not just our friend. So he wanted them to always be aware, when you're saying this, and I hope you pray this prayer, but I hope you don't pray it as something that you just repeat, like a parrot. Because when you are making these declarations, you are calling him something special in your own life. You are giving him a... a, 
a place where you say, you are the one I'm learning from. You are the one I want to be like. You are my father. You are my dad. You are the one that I want to reverence and honor all the days of my life. And when I'm in your presence, I want to glean from you so that I can have your attributes. Um, John Avanzini was at Abundant Life recently, and he looked over at uh, Bishop's son, and he said, Sean, he goes, you know, you have a great future ahead of you. He said, but you ought to just follow your dad around wherever he is, and if he drops a piece of paper on the floor, you need to pick it up because that could be your next sermon. He said, you, if, if you value what he has on the inside of him, and if you, if you want to take that which is already on the inside of him, you will be able to walk in the same kind of anointing and even more, even in the increase of that. But you need to have a reverence for what the price that he's paid. And so when we are saying, hallowed be thy name, we are saying, God, there is no one as pure as you. There is no one as holy as you. But I want that attribute. I am going to follow you around. I am going to get as close to you as I can. And I am going to hope that I am going to walk holy as you are holy. You know the Bible tells us that we should do that. He said, be holy as I am holy. If he said, be holy as I am holy, it means that we can be. Wow. Well, can we be perfect? No. But we can have a perfect heart after God. We can be perfectly in love with him. We can be perfectly trying to grow up. We can be perfectly convinced that the way that he wants us to be is the way we should be. And so our heart will, will start responding to it. He wants us to have this as a daily declaration. And he wants us to have his attributes coming into our life. It says in 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16, as obedient children... Not conforming yourself to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. I mean, somewhere along the line, the church of the living God... They represent him well, maybe with their words. But do they represent him well with the character of holiness? If someone was looking for a Christian to follow, would they choose you because you act holy, like your father? Would they choose you because you want to be in a righteous state, you want to do what's right. You want to make a difference. You want to be the light and the salt. You actually want to be the model that they could follow. I mean, if you had, well, and probably we have it a lot more than we think we do, but if we had a camera following us around every day and we wanted to affect the next generation, would we be happy if they replayed it at the end of the day, everything we've said, everything we've done, every place we've gone. I mean, this is what God is looking for. He's looking for a people that he can call his own. Jesus knew it was going to be challenging. Why do you think he taught his disciples this prayer? He taught them this prayer because he knew they were going to need this prayer. He taught him this prayer because he said, if you really want to represent God's kingdom on earth, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to change your heart about things. You're going to have to always be mindful of these things, that he is holy and you're going to want to be like him. I don't know. It's not, pe people reject these kind of messages because they think it's another thing for them to have to follow and have rules to be by. But the truth is this. Our first words are, Daddy. 
our first words are acknowledging that he is such a vital part of our life that we value who he is, and we want to be like him. And so since he is holy, when we're with him, we get to be holy. It change, he changes our mind about what we want to do. He changes our heart about how we present ourselves. It's all about being with him and being close to him. Amen? Okay, so we want to live a life that represents him well on earth. Then he says, declare this, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, okay, we say that as a prayer, but honestly, what are we saying about his kingdom coming? It it tells us what we're saying. Let your kingdom come and let it be here like it is there, which means you are saying, let there be no sickness Let there be no disease. Let there be no lack. Let there be no sorrow. Let there be joy. Let there be peace. Let there be reverence. Let there be praise. I mean, heaven is a happy place. Let there be no more strife. Let there be no more anger. Let people walk in love. We are making a declaration in our prayer that your kingdom is is coming here now. And your will is going to be seen. And guess who is going to be seen through? Me and through you. As we live out our life totally secure in him and making the declaration of who he is. When you say this prayer, Say it knowing why you're saying it, who you're saying it to, and what you're saying. It's a declaration. We are waiting for his reign to come on earth. We are waiting for his rule to come on earth in such a way that the earth begins to conform and look like heaven. Then he says, give us this day our daily bread. You know why he said that? Not because we're hungry and we need bread to eat I mean it can include that because he wants us to say it and stay close to him and give us daily what we're going to need to carry these things out that we're not going to live on yesterday's manna that we're not going to live on what we know of from the past but we're going to live on what is alive on the inside of us because we've spent this time with God and we're making this declaration if we don't stay in close intimate relationship with God if we forget that he is holy and worthy of our attention if we forget to pursue him we will forget his provision if we forget to pursue him We will forget his provision. We'll forget and we won't be satisfied because our life falls apart when we're not serving him. Our relationship begins to waver. Whenever you're sad, whenever you're distant from God, all of a sudden you start readjusting back to the days before he impacted your life. You know When you get saved, you're so excited about God because he came into your life. You felt the difference. And if you didn't feel the difference, you should have. Because all of a sudden, you were free from things you couldn't get free of on your own. All of a sudden, the birds sounded better. The sun shined brighter. Everybody seemed nicer. But it wasn't them that was nicer. It was you. (laughs) Because all of a sudden, you were looking through different eyes. Amen? Amen? And so, but if we don't stay in this kind of attitude, if we don't pray these prayers, if we don't recognize, if we're not declaring, if we're not doing what God has called us to do, we readjust back to the days before our life was impacted by him forgiving us of the things that we could never be forgiven of on our own. So that's why we have to have a relationship with him in the first place. And this is why he says, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Why do you think he included that in the prayer that we should pray every day? Because here's the biggest trick 
of the enemy. Offense. Amen. If we, here's what happens when you walk in unforgiveness. You walk in unforgiveness because you're offended with somebody. You walk in unforgiveness because somebody didn't act the way you thought that they should act towards you. And so you put, you impose upon them this thing that you refuse to take back now because they deserve you to not forgive. And so we make judgment all the time. And we judge people for how they're supposed to live or how they're not supposed to live. And Jesus knew that they were going to have to say this every day. We need to say this every day. Listen, I'm not perfect, Jesus. I know that I'm not. Father, help me. Forgive me my sin and help me forgive everyone else who has sinned against me. Because if I don't forgive them, I can't be forgiven. And so this is important for us to know. Father God put everything in order so that we can live free and stay free. Not just get free for a moment. Not just get free for a week. Not just get free for a month. Not just, but just so that we could have the freedom that he has provided for us. And not holding unforgiveness in our heart. And becoming those people that he wants us to be. How can we represent him well? What if Jesus, you know. What if he just said, listen, they just hung me on this cross. And so you can forgive everyone else, God, by the sacrifice. But those people who put those nails in my hand and my feet, they're out. Those people who spit on me and mock me and, and beat my back, they're out. I am going to hold that against them because how could they? I'm not, I never even sinned. The ones that I walked with that disappeared when I needed them the most. Did Jesus have to exercise forgiveness? He had to give it up. He had to hold no offense. And so if he did, he knew how hard it was going to be. He knew what he was going to face. And he knew how hard it was going to be for you too. And so he said daily, daily you need to say, forgive me. And help me to forgive them. Because if you forgive them and you walk in this, you will be forgiven every day. And if you're forgiven and you know you don't deserve it, you'll have a heart to forgive others. Amen? Amen. God is to be depended on and sought for so that we can be delivered from all evil. And that means that he will deliver us also from the schemes of the devil. And so, a few verses down it says in verse 9, And so it is with prayer. Keep on asking, and you will keep on getting. He didn't say, I want you to learn this prayer when you're a kid, and then that's good. You don't have to keep doing it. He said, keep on asking. And then you'll keep on getting. Keep on looking, and you will keep on finding. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened. That means that when you pray this, you're like this with heaven. You're like, okay, give me this day my daily bread. Okay, help me to keep you honored. Okay, help me to forgive these crazy people. Really, Jesus, really help me. Really, really, really help me. And he said, if you keep knocking and you keep asking, you're going to receive it. He's going to open the door. Everyone who asks receives and all who seek find. And the door will be open to everyone who knocks. But if you're not knocking it's not opening and then you say I don't know what happened this stuff doesn't work but it does work look at somebody and say it does work yes Lord these are the things that keep us close to him these are the things that keep us mindful that he is our father how many fathers wish your kids would ask you for the proper things <laughs> 
and then listen to what you have to say, okay, and to do what you would have them to do. Yes, and how many of you want to do that just because you're a control freak? No. No. (laughs) Don't ask the kids. Ask the fathers. (laughs) But why? Because your heart is for them. Your heart is for them. You know what they need more than they know what they need. That's why when you get older, you look back and you go, oh, my dad did this right, and he told me this, and I wish I would have listened I wish I would have listened. It would have kept me out of trouble, right? Okay, well, that is how our Heavenly Father is. He's trying to warn you. He's trying to train you. He's trying to get you to understand something. He's trying to get you to live your life abundantly, and this is how he told you to do it. Amen? Okay, so he loves all of his children, all of his children. He's for all of us. And so he called us all his children, children of God. 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. He sees us beyond our shortcomings. I am so glad about that. In his eyes, we're always good. Wow. You know why? Because he's not looking at what we're doing stupid. And he's not even looking at what we're doing wrong. He is looking at what he knows we can be because he's looked into the future and he has secured our purpose and our destiny. And he is working from eternity future and bringing it back into eternity present and guiding us every step of the way because he loves us that much. He created us like him from the beginning. And so you can act like him. You can think like him. You can be like him. You can see other people through eyes of love. And if you do, you'll take action to help them. When we didn't deserve it and we didn't respond properly to him, he didn't give up on us. He keeps after us and after us. His eyes are always full of compassion and grace. Psalms 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant and mercy and truth. And so the Lord has proven that to me over and over and over again. Why? Because he sees us still becoming in practice what we are positionally already in Christ. Right? Right? So positionally, we are sitting at the right hand of the Father. Positionally, we are hidden in Christ and God. But he knows that we are becoming in practice like him. We are becoming his children who act like him. Okay? Because we belong to him. He is our daddy. And when you are confident in him and in his love for you, you will realize that no one is beyond the compassion and mercy of God. If you think about... Who you would have wrote off, you know, like Paul, when he, when he was Saul, we would have thought there was no hope for that guy. I don't know. I mean, if I was God, I certainly wouldn't have picked him. He was going around slaughtering children. He was a nasty one, okay? But he called him, and he saw him getting beyond it. <laughs> he did. And he's happy, happy, happy when we reverence him this way, that we know that he's loving and he's kind. Our, I think sometimes we, we know so much about the story of the cross that we forget the sacrifice and we forget to be grateful for it. And so our prayers should be with a grateful heart saying, Abby, let my heart be mindful of what you did, your sacrifice, and help me to be thankful for all that you've given to me. And let the gratefulness, I loved it that we were singing about being grateful to him today. Because when that, when we ask for his heart, we're going to see through different eyes. We're going to start thinking and seeing like he does. So shouldn't we all see through his eyes? So there was a girl that was born blind and she had a really tough life. And she really hated everyone because of it. She was mad, she was angry, and she hated everyone except for her boyfriend, who was good to her. And so he was always there for her, and he loved her very much. And she always just said to him, if I could just see the world 
then I'd marry you. If I could just see the world. I can't marry you. I can't see anything. I can't. So one day she was notified that she had a donor for her eyes, and she received those beautiful eyes. And finally she could see. She could see the whole world, and she could see her boyfriend. And so he was so excited, and he said, well, will you marry me now? And she said, no, because you see, he was blind. And so he walked away in tears. And then he wrote her a letter. And he said, just take care of my eyes, dear. Yeah. That's love. But you see how you respond to that story? You respond to that story because love gave a sacrifice. Because love gave beyond what anybody in the natural would normally give. But when we say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, we don't go, ah, anymore because we're used to it and because somehow Satan has got us to think it's common but he didn't just pluck his eyes out for us he gave us the ability to see people through different eyes he gave us a heart that can beat when his heart stopped beating because of us He gave us the ability for a heart transplant so that we could respond the way he does when people are in front of us. When he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He gave us the ability that when we said that prayer, we would have the ability to forgive everyone that has done anything against us because we recognize the sacrifice that bought us that ability. When we stand before the Lord, what is he going to say? What is he going to say about our life and how we portrayed him? Is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, is Jesus going to welcome you and say, hey, you had my father's eyes. So there's this song, it's old, but I love this song. I played this song a lot when my kids were growing up. I played it every time I cleaned the house, actually. And I don't know, I mean, there was something about the whole album that, that just soaked on the inside of me and made me appreciate and be grateful for God. And it kind of left an imprint inside of me that, that makes my heart continue to cry out in this way. Because when I stand before him, oh, I want him to say, well done. But I want him to say, this is why it was well done. Is that you represented me right. And when people saw you, they saw me. And so last night, one of, the, one of my friends that I went to school with in high school, just out of the blue, she, she said to me, um, Dawn, I don't know if you know this or not, but you impacted my life in high school. She said, whenever I saw you, I really did see the light of Jesus coming through you. And I went, wow, this is like perfect for this moment before I preach this sermon. Because the heart, my heart's desire, and if you want to make God smile... It will be your desire too. 
He said, when people see you, they will see the eyes of the Father and they will respond to your heart. So we're going to play this song. So just let it soak in to your spirit like it did mine. And remember, we'll stand before him one day. And this is what we'd like him to say. Well, I did start making music when I was just a kid and been playing guitar my whole life. I haven't gotten any better, but I have been playing my whole life. I'm going to do an old song for you. I, this song was written by Gary Chapman, and this song I, I really kind of has a double meaning. It's about a father, and I think about my Heavenly Father, and I also think about my brown-eyed dad, Burton Grant. I may not be every mother's dream for a little girl And my face may not grace the mind of everyone in the world but That's alright as long as I can have one wish I pray When people look inside my She has her father's eyes Her father's eyes You know, eyes that find the good in things When good is not around And eyes that find the source of help When help just can't be found Eyes full of Seeing every pain Knowing what you're going through And feeling it the same It's like my father's eyes My father's eyes My father's eyes
for Father's Day. I think we need to honor our natural fathers if they're still alive. But I think we need to take a moment to honor our Abba, Father. And if we have called him common, if we have gotten to the place where the sacrifice of Jesus does not cause fire in our heart, change our mind and cause us to want to be living in such a way that it honors him, then I think it's appropriate that on Father's Day we just give it all back to him. That the desire of our heart is going to be let your eyes be seen through mine. Let the compassion be real. And let me be like you. So let's pray. So, Father God, we come right now. And, Lord, for any time that we have, we have called, because we know you so well, because we've heard these stories so many times, because we've heard this prayer so many times that we haven't put the value on it that it deserves, that we haven't repeated it from the depth of our heart, causing us to align ourselves with heaven's desires. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. You are the best dad. You are the best father anyone could have. You gave the ultimate sacrifice through giving your son in our place. And so we want to honor you today. We don't want to call you father, distant, somebody that we're afraid of. But we want to call you Abba, Daddy, someone we know and someone we trust and someone we want to be like. Give us your heart. Give us your eyes. And let us follow in your actions. Lord, we want to be holy and righteous and loving and kind. So help us today as we recommit our life and our attention and our affection back to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. When you, you see what happens to the atmosphere when, when you honor the sacrifice of Jesus. When you acknowledge what he's done, his presence shows up. And it's in his presence you are changed. So, everybody, go back to the prayer that Jesus taught us. Declare it every day. And let it be a reminder of who we are and what we're supposed to be on the earth. Let his kingdom come and his will be done. Through you, honor him. Amen? Amen. So let's just look to heaven and say, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Abba. Abba. Thanks for being a good, good father. We love you the most. And we are confident that you love us the most. Amen. All right, go shine for somebody, would you? Enjoy your families. If you don't have a family, hook up with another family. Be sure to hug all the fathers around you. Make them feel good about their life. Amen? Amen. If you would like to support this ministry with a financial contribution, visit our website at www.LibertyLifeCenter.org. Find the link to the left that says Donate Now and follow the instructions there. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing worldwide through this ministry.